everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Hi, hello, I apologize for the sounds of cars. It was dead silent for five minutes, and as soon as I start filming, all the cars go zipping by. I have my door open! It's nice to have, it's not actually nice enough to have it open, but I had it open because I was cooking and it was fresh. Anyways, hi friends, welcome to the start of another weekend vlog. It's Friday! This week has felt 8,000 years long. Let me just say, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is. These past few weeks, I don't know, maybe it's just because there hasn't been a day off in a while. It just felt forever, you know? Anyways, I am here. Oh, what am I gonna be reading this weekend? That's a great question. I got nothing going on except for my own plans. To read and write. This is an incredible angle. I have plans to read Reisinger. I really need to get this just fucking done at this point. I need to actually commit and read it. I also have my incredibly overdue library book, The Map of the Other Lands by, uh, Emily's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett that I started, I'm like 30 pages into. And of course I have all of these books <laughs> here. So in a perfect world, I would be reading perhaps this, most definitely, hold on, <laughs> it's at the bottom. This graphic novel, because it's very short, is Confetti Realms by Nadia Shamas and a bunch of other people. I would also be finishing <laughs> Breisinger, and I would also be wrapping Map of the Other Lands by Emily Wilde. And, not by Emily Wilde, Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett, there we go. And also starting one of these beasts, because I feel like I've been slacking on my TBR. I feel like I've just been slacking on my reading, which I have good reason to be, because I'm in the middle of a writing challenge. What writing challenge, you may ask? I have begun making myself write every day in an attempt to finish my first draft of Aramat Book 3 by the end of March. There are 16 days left and I just hit 50,000 words last night. I don't know where I am in the story. I'm kind of just vibing. In my heart, I feel like this is gonna be close to 100,000 words. So I have 50,000 words more to write by the end of the month in 16 days. I am going to be so burnt out after this, but I need this, I need this. Because as you guys know, I have not been very productively creative these first couple months of the year. I just, well, I have been, I've been doing a lot of creative things. I just haven't pushed myself to actually write and get this draft down because all my brain wants to do <laughs> is make a story better or completely brainstorm something new. So that's only good when I have a story to make better. So I need to actually have a story to make better. Thus, <laughs> completing, completing the draft by the end of March is the goal because also i am expecting <laughs> news on whether or not i'm gonna get my the writing grants that i've applied to at some point and on one of them the timeline the self-made timeline i've given myself is april april and may to be draft two <laughs> for this story and uh etc etc anyway so i would really like to actually have a draft so that i can start making the story better because at <sighs> as of right now I, as I said, 50,000 words in, I can feel how much of the story that I am just floundering through. I can feel how much of it is going to need to change. I don't know what I'm going to need to change yet, but I can feel the majority of the story is just like there's pieces that I'm putting down of this puzzle that I need to put all of the pieces down for to see what fits better in different places to thus bring the whole puzzle together. This is a very similar feeling that I had when I was writing A Little Luck, even though that first draft I was writing in the middle of like, you know, burnout and depressive episodes and changing new men's and whatever. It was a time writing A Little Luck, but I could feel it then too. I could feel it like putting the story down on paper. I was like, oh no, like I need to be, I need all the pieces so that I can put this story together better. Um, so I'm trying to just get all the pieces down and then I will make the story better. And that's what draft one is. It's just getting all the pieces down and telling myself the story. So anyways, that is part of my weekend plans, but I'm not gonna talk about that too much here because I am doing a writing vlog specific for that challenge. So don't worry about that. This is going to be more reading vlog focused. But yes, because of that challenge, I haven't read very much and I haven't really felt the pull to read anything since last weekend when I read two books in, two in a day. And even then I was starting to feel the beginning of that feeling of, of not wanting to read as much or nothing is really pulling me to read. So I feel like this bad boy is kind of clogging my brain because I know I need to finish this to thus finish my, my Friends Pick by TBR vlog, which should have gone up two weeks ago. So I need to finish this so that I can then put that vlog up and then I can move on in my brain to other things 
maybe Inheritance after this or some other big fantasy books that I have on my TBR. I just have so many big chunky fantasy books on my TBR, which you guys know if you saw one of my early vlogs in March, I showed you the giant stack of chunky fantasies. Yeah. I think in a perfect world, I'll get a couple good writing sessions in because I'd like to keep that up every day, writing like 2,900 words. Keep that going. Just keep moving on the third Aramount book. And then try to make my way through this big boy. And also this one. I also need to go to the library tomorrow because there's probably like eight books waiting for me there right now. So many books waiting for me because the Trans Rights Readathon is coming up and I just went ham on my library's hold system. Luckily, all the books that I wanted for the Trans Rights Readathon coming up were available. And so I just put them all on hold and they've all like come into me. So I gotta go get them uh, tomorrow. And I would love to bring the Map of the Otherlands back because it is so overdue. Even if I haven't finished reading it, I think I'll bring it back because by then, if I'm reading it, I'll probably just be listening to the audiobook. And that's totally fine to end with. Oh, this is so cute. Anyways, but yeah. Probably gonna get this done at some point. This is Confetti Realms. Just to get a flavor of something quick and get a nice story in me. Yeah, I feel like I haven't read anything in so long. And I think it's just because I'm not like actively trying to read anything at the moment. And I just don't feel like reading, but I do feel like reading. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I wanna get my reading done, but I also haven't felt like a pull or a yearning to read. What a weird place to be in. I've heard like a lot of people are in different reading slumps. I'm not in a reading slump. Because like I usually consider a slump to be something that when I go and try and read a bunch of stuff, like nothing is working because that's just not what's happening to me right now. I'm just not feeling the urge to read, which is totally fine. Everything goes in seasons and different flavors and moods and stuff. And who's all? I'm gonna get to my dinner because it's it's sitting here. It is almost it's eight. <laughs> so I should really eat because I'm very hungry. We'll get this weekend started, but yeah, happy weekend. Get yourself a beverage, drink some water. It's gonna be a good one. It is not much later. It is 2 a.m. Because of course it is. I don't even care about the pile of clothes on my floor right now. Everything is just going down there because I want to sleep. I'm just, I want to sleep. <laughs> it's fine. I tossed and turned all evening with the choice whether or not that my hair looks crazy. It's fine. To finish Emily Wilde because I was enjoying it so much. I got to, I have an, exactly an hour left on the audiobook right now in the, at the speed that I'm listening to it at. So it's like two hours and 45 minutes in total, but at two times seven, 2.75 speed, which is the fastest I could listen to it on Cabo. <laughs> an hour left. And I was just like, this was 12 when I was thinking of it. I was like, what if I just left it for tomorrow and wrote instead? And then I went down a rabbit hole with my writing. Wrote a scene that will not be in the final one. I can tell you that right now. Why? Because it's a sexy scene. <laughs> you guys ever, if you're a writer, do you do this? Where you just get the urge. In the middle of a scene that's not even remotely like that. You're just like, what if? <laughs> and then you write 2100 words in this scene. <sighs> And just, I don't know, I'm basking in this glow right now with this book because I know rationally in my brain that I need to be moving this story along because what I'm writing right now <laughs> is doing nothing for that. It's just, like, not even, not even the scene that I wrote today that's not going to be in it. That's fine. That happens to me with every book. But, like, 
yesterday's scene is just like a soft amble through Mary's garden. And like, I'm just sitting in this beautiful pink hue of Mary's cozy garden and like not moving the story along at all. <laughs> so like, I'm writing a lot of bullshit words right now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, because there's elements in these bullshit words that I do want to include. There's conversations that are being had that I do want to include, and I do need to get them down somehow. But man, is it? This this draft is a mess. Like, it has no proper structure at this point. I'm just writing scenes, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But yeah, tomorrow I need to actually pick up the thread of the story and get it moving, because there's a few story elements that I need to bring in and actually <laughs> push them along to get their story, I, like, lines going um bring us into the meat of the book kind of a thing meat of the story i should say not meat of the book but yeah i hit my word count tonight just because i was ambling around in mary's garden for a couple hours <laughs> sometimes you just need to write for the sake of writing and that's what today felt like because there was a very beautiful start to that scene it was very like heartfelt and sincere and that element of it will probably come into the final draft because there's a conversation in there that I think is so heartbreaking but needs to happen because it's a scene that, or it's a question that I know a lot of people have in D&D &D games with characters of different species. And it's the idea, I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna spoil it. I don't even wanna spoil it. Like it's, it's a conversation that needed to be had and should have been had also in Ari and Finn's book for multiple reasons, but I didn't because I was like, mm, I don't want to touch that in this right now. I don't, I don't want to bring that in here. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I think I'm going to bring it into this book just because it's something that Mary will definitely think of. This homegirl is so lonely. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so there are good kernels of stuff that I'm writing. It's just a lot of bullshit words today. And it's okay, I needed that. But yeah, I have an hour left of Emily Wilde. I'm loving this book. I'm loving it even more than the first one. And like, when I read the first one, I read it when I was at the cabin over Christmas. I was doing that like cozy fantasy type vlog in my holiday vlog that I put up. It was, it was good, but it just didn't like grab me in any way. This one I'm really, really enjoying. I don't know what it is about this, this, this Emily Wilde. It's just, I was really enjoying the story and it feels so much more warm to me than the first one and cozy and genuinely lovely. And I'm loving the character dynamics in it. Like there's a moment when like it's pure chaos. All of the characters involved are just like breaking down. Someone's trying to get into their cottage things are happening and then Wendell who is the fey man is just sitting on the couch drinking tea and he's not bothered and I find it so funny because everyone else is fully freaking out and he's just there sipping his tea because he doesn't he just doesn't give a shit oh it makes me laugh and the way that Emily specifically handles some of the people and the conversations that she has like there's this like one of the one of the aspects of this story of this of this part the second story in Emily Wilde is that she has this kind of weird man pop up around her every once in a while and she calls him a ribbons man because he's just constantly fiddling with a ton of fucking ribbons and he's very like he speaks in riddles he doesn't seem to really know what's happening and then he just vanishes the way that she speaks to him is so funny because she's so pragmatic and scholarly and like to the point there's a conversation that they have where she's just like, I've had it with your riddles. Hello, speak to me directly. And it's just so funny. I love her so much. She's great. I lo love, truly. And like the romance in here is so sweet. I love it. I'm thriving. And I will definitely be adding this book to my shelves because <laughs> I have it from the library. And when I'm done my book buying ban, this will be one that I add to my shelves for sure, because it's just, I need it. Like it's, it's giving the same vibe as the Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Those books, like it's giving that vibe, but better. And I've only read the first two books of that series. So maybe this is just telling me that I need to continue with the Marie Brennan series. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. What a good night. Tomorrow, I'll give you some more writing, more reading. I'll finish up Emily Wilde and I'll do some work on Bryce Singer as well. I would like to also go to the grocery store and I need to go to the library as well. Also, I wanna do some work on the audiobook stuff. So I'm hoping that I don't sleep forever tomorrow <laughs> and that I actually have like a day to do stuff. So I should go to bed, but yeah, what a day, what a day. Anyways, friends, catch up with me tomorrow. Hello friends, <laughs> happy Saturday. I look 
like such a mess and it's because it's really windy outside. I need to wash my hair. Like it's the two combinations that could w never work worse for a person. Anyways, uh, I got my library haul in today. There were nine books waiting for me. I was worried for the first time in my life that they wouldn't let me take out all the books because I have another stack still waiting here. And in my head, I'm like, what if I'm over the 20 book limit? Cause I think it's 20 book limit. I'm not sure. But there are seven books currently in my apartment that I didn't pick up today. And then an additional nine. <laughs> so I'm not yet at that 20 book limit, which is good. But anyways, so I picked up The Modern Herbal Dispensatory, A Medicine Making Guide. This is the second time that I've picked this book up for research. I was gonna buy it straight out for research for uh, Air My Book 3, but it is like $39 for a paperback everywhere on the internet. And I was like, so expensive. Coming from a Canadian who buys hardbacks regularly at that price. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so I probably will end up picking this up one day, but I just needed to look at a few things in here. So I picked it up. I put it on hold at like 3 a.m. one night when I was frantically writing. I also got The Labyrinth's Heart by M.A. Carrick, which is the third book in the Rook and the Rose trilogy. I haven't yet read book two, but it is in that stack currently on my piano of library books. Also picked up How to Read Now by Elaine Castillo, which is a nonfiction that I've heard wonderful things about. It's a bunch of different essays. So I'm hoping that I can get to this at some point because I've heard this is wonderful and a really, really good read. Also got A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal, which is in. Also requested the library to buy this. This is one of my like, from my 2024 like pre-orders page. This is one of the ones that I requested through the library to buy and they did and I now have it. So will I have time to read that? Only time will tell. And then these next five are for the Transways Readathon and there is a sixth one coming to me. <laughs> It's currently in transit to my library and I have two more books here in my place to read. So I think I'm super covered for the trans rights readathon. It's only like five days long, seven. It's only a week long. I'm not gonna have as much time as I think I'm going to to read all these books, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we have Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. This is a wonderful little graphic novel that was recently made into a movie. So maybe I'll watch the movie after, but I, this has been on my list for a really long time to read. It's just been one of those graphic novels that's like been hovering in my brain. I also got The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. I expected this to be like a full length, like juicy novel. So the fact that this is a novella makes me so happy because I can read this so quickly now. And I am so excited about it. So love that. Also picked up Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. From my experience, Aiden Thomas's books are so quick to read and I really, really enjoy the way he writes books. So I'm really interested to see how they did this Peter Pan retelling because Peter Pan was my favorite movie as a child. <laughs> I had a imaginary friend and his name was Peter and he could fly. And I had regular dreams that I could fly because Peter could fly. I'm very excited to get to this because I don't think I've ever read a Peter Pan retelling ever. So first Peter Pan retelling, is there. We're just gonna reawaken the child in me. <laughs> I also have An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I tried to read a River Solomon last year for the Transverse Readathon. I don't think the audiobook came in in time for the Transverse Readathon, if I remember correctly, but I read it around then and it just really didn't work for me. I ended up DNFing it. So we'll see how this one goes. I've heard that this is very hard hitting and very, very difficult to read, but I'm excited about it anyways, because it just, it's sci-fi. It sounds pretty good. So why not? <laughs> then last, we have Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White, which this cover is some of the coolest cover. Like every time I see this book in store and around on the internet, every time I'm like, wow. I have no idea what to expect from this. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I have a f two YA books, which is very rare for this readathon setup because you guys know me. I'm not a big fan of YA books anymore. But sometimes when you're looking specifically for a trans rep that is incredibly good, the more, most oftentimes you're gonna find it in the YA genre, which I think is fantastic for the YA genre, but I would like to see more of it for the adult genre. You know, I would just like to see more of that representation start to come into adult fantasy and sci-fi books more and more and more and be as beloved as these books from the YA age category, you know? But I, it's like, it's super great because it gives the kids these days the representation that I did not have as a kid growing up. So very important and I love that. But yes, so too many books, my friends. I added too many books to my shelves. I need to chill. I think I'm gonna go through my library holds and like suspend them even further now so that I don't get anything for the month of April because I just can't handle it. 
<laughs> I just can't handle getting more books. And the suspend hold feature on the library is just gorgeous. Anyways, I am gonna go shower, wash my hair, and then make a coffee because I haven't drinking coffee yet today and I'm feeling the effect. I'm gonna just get cozy on the couch again. But I also did finish reading Emily Wilde today. I put it in my ear as I was walking around, going to the grocery store, going to the library. So I returned Emily Wilde and Tusks of Extinction because they were both overdue. And so I was like, that's fine. If I want to get to the Tusks of, Insti of Extinction, I can read that on Scribd. It's a very short little audiobook, so I will read that at some point because I am very interested in it. I've heard wonderful things about that sci-fi book. I did return the physical book today along, along with Emily Wilde's and I fucking loved that book. It was so good and it makes me want to like reread the first one to see if I would enjoy it more in a different mood than I was around Christmas. <laughs> like, Because around Christmas I felt like a little bit detached from it and I don't know if that was just me or if it was the book itself. But I, fuck it, this book was so good. It's so good. It's so sweet. And I love the journal aspect of it. I really, really enjoyed it. So I will probably talk about it in a little, a little bit later, but I'm going to go shower. I feel disgusting. <laughs> so I'm going to go put these books somewhere. I don't think I'm going to be able to stack them all on my piano now because that stack is already huge. Let's see if I can find a spot for these <laughs> because this is already so tall. Put you there. Let's see. Okay. Oh, please don't. I don't need that in my life today. <laughs> please don't fall. Okay, I also want to take this second book here and put it over here. So I want to read it soon. So, giant book. Okay. This one's going to go here so they are next to each other. I should really put like this order of importance maybe i can stack them all up maybe i'm just gonna live on the edge maybe that's what's gonna happen today <laughs> oh, let's live on the edge together oh my god all right <laughs> this is so dangerous and i love it <laughs> Oh my god, it's so tall. I'm probably gonna have to move it, but like right now it's fine. <laughs> what a stack! <laughs> and if that book was still in it, this lovely An Echo of Things to Come, it would be even taller because these thick books. What a stack. <laughs> beautiful friends it is much later happy basically sunday at this point <laughs> <sighs> just ended my foray of writing for the day i wrote so many more words than i thought i was going to but i just couldn't stop i set three separate 20 minute timers but no when i started writing i think it was 12 30 so it's been just over an hour now of like writing based stuff and i have 3700 words down for the day which is so many words this whole chapter was so fun to write because I'm actually moving the story along a little bit now and I have like an introduced a character that I need to introduce finally and some just like some possibilities and some buzzing and what a good scene like this is definitely a scene that's going to stay in some shape or form in the final product because it's very important this meeting and the discussions being had between the characters and this kind of stuff so we're sitting at 57,000 words I love it amazing anyways I'm gonna save this and I'm going to close that beautiful thing actually I'm gonna actually close Scrivener too because my computer was acting up today I was working on it earlier and everything was fine nothing was happening and it was at basically full charge when I went to go start reading Confetti Realms because I had this laying on my computer on my book cart, I could feel the heat coming from my computer. And I was like, what the frig? It was running so hot. And I was like, what is happening? Like, I have not left anything running. I have not done anything on this computer in hours. Why are you running so hot right now? And it was closed. It was sleep. Like, it shouldn't be running hot. 
it wasn't even plugged in and I opened it up and it had zero battery left and it was just like it was piping hot and I was like what is happening did it just drain itself and decided to burn like I don't know so shut everything down and make sure nothing else happens to my beautiful computer because I would literally die if something happened to it <laughs> it's just gonna hang out there in the corner <laughs> on its little perch with nothing running <laughs> I did read all of Confetti Realms today. It was cute, it was fine, it was very YA, and it's very much written for the youths, the youths of today. It's very queer, it's very like teaching a group of kids to come to terms with their feel, like feeling their feelings and being able to communicate those feelings in a proper way and also to listen to others. Like it was a very teachable moment and I would highly recommend this graphic novel for anyone with teens or younger readers in their household because definitely is going to be a good read for them. And the art style is so beautiful. It is about a group of kids, as I said, there's four of them. And on Halloween night and All Hallows Eve, they go to a graveyard to get drunk and summon ghosts <laughs> and accidentally make a deal with this guy who slips them through to an alternate dimension called the Confetti Realms. To get home, they have to collect a bunch of teeth for him. And in doing so, they also learn a bunch of, about, a bunch of stuff about themselves and blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. Anyways, but yeah, it was like three stars, pretty solid. And then I also did that spread as well. Fun, now I have both of these spreads finished and done and dusted, which is lovely. I don't know what the lighting is like on this side of my place. Is that better? A little bit, there we go. So this is the Emily Wilde spread, books 30 and 31, which we love. And then I did also get a little bit of reading done for Breisinger. I've decided to try and read it without the audiobook because I found, I just, I'm finding the audiobook so slow because it, I have said this many different times in many different vlogs, I cannot speed this audiobook up any faster than two times speed. On Apple Books, it's just the speed that I'm listening to that, and that is not as fast as I read. That is not my reading speed. So tandem reading this book with the audiobook is brutal for me because I just want to like sink into the story and stuff like that. So I ended up reading about 150 pages. I'm now sitting at page 243. Chapter is called A Feast with Friends. So I ended up reading 150 pages uh, with just my eyeballs. And I miss the audiobook. I miss the gravitas of being told a story to absorb it and also like get all the different voices. I just find it's such a beautiful way to get a story, but <laughs> I'm reading it faster now. So that's good. But yeah, I'm now making my way through this. I was gonna make my way through more of it. Ho I was hoping to make my way like halfway through this book today, but that just wasn't gonna happen because then I also needed to write. <laughs> been writing I wrote 3700 words so love that for me definitely a semi-productive day I didn't get any audiobooking done so that's definitely gonna happen tomorrow evening tomorrow midday I should really go to bed because uh, I need to actually get up and do things in the morning but midday I'm gonna go mom and dad's and we're gonna go to a like cabin lake show thing convention at a local racetrack we have here in my city they often have like shows like craft shows and stuff there this is a sp and they, they have a home show there often this is like a specific like cabin and lake one that we're gonna go to mom, mom asked me yesterday if I wanted to go and I was like well, why not it'll give me something to do tomorrow but then after that it's gonna be dinner with them so that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, which is great because I will get to cuddle with my dog who I haven't seen in like two weeks. I miss her face. And then I will also be able to print off the fucking tens of different kinds of papers I have to print off for taxes this year. That was my day. Lovely, lovely. Did I explain my feelings about Emily Wilde to you? I feel like I like b briefly mentioned it earlier where I ran away and showered. <laughs> oh my God. Emily Wilde loved that book so much oh my gosh oh my gosh Kelly. like it just i don't know what this book did in particular compared to the first book but it just did something slightly different that made me fall so in love with the atmosphere of this story the characters specifically the relationships and the banter and the dynamics that were happening between the characters i just really really loved it the only thing that i think would have been even better is that what I missed from the first one, the first one was also good, but I do now want to reread it to see if like my mood is different, as I said, and I'll like it more. But in the first one, there was a better connection with Emily Bambleby and the village that they were staying in. They had more of a rapport with the folks in the village and they have more of a connection with the people they were staying with. And they were learning more about the people there and their customs and stuff like that. And they just 
didn't have that same rapport or connection with the village they were staying in this time, a little village in Austria. And it was such an interesting village because there was comments about, like Wendell even said, like they have fae in their blood. Like these people are fae in a very, very slight touch and they've been traumatized by these fae beasts at night. They have to leave out offerings and they cannot go out after dark and all this kind of stuff. They've been traumatized with like people being taken and stolen and all this kind of stuff for so many years. I just wish we had gotten a tighter connection with the people there because it just seemed like it was lacking that aspect of it, which was so nice in the first one. So like if I could take the first one's connection and put it in this book, it would be a perfect book. It would be a perfect book. I think that's the only thing that I was missing from this one because I just really enjoyed everything else about it. I enjoyed the elements of the Ribbons Man, of the labyrinthine texture to the borderlands and the Fey realm and the mortal realm and all the way how they interconnected. The lost two scholars that they're trying to find and that they're being like kind of interacted with throughout this whole story and also the final like introduction of Wendell's realm and getting to see that was really, really cool. And I just love the way that it was, that it ended and it, the way that it's set up for the next story. I ended up giving that one four and a half stars, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> if that wasn't clear from my rambling. And then Confetti Realms got three stars. So overall, a fairly good weekend of reading. Hopefully gonna get some more work on Bursting Are Done tomorrow and carve my way through this. I think if I'm feeling crafty or anything or like wanting to work on maps or something with my hands, I'll listen to the audiobook, but otherwise I'll just try and carve through it with my eyes to see if I can really pound my way through this and finally get it done. Because I think this is what's like leaving me hung up on reading more things because I also really want to read An Echo of Things to Come by James Ellington, which is sitting right there on my, on like behind, literally behind you <laughs> on my coffee table. I just really want to get into that tome and read more of James Ellington's world before I lose uh, the memory of things. Because today <laughs> when I was writing, I couldn't remember two of the characters that I named in A Little Luck that are big characters in A Little Luck. I was sitting here and I was just like, I don't remember when I named the barmaid. What? And then her name came to me like kind of quickly, but it was still like drawing through Merc to try get her name. And she's not that of an important of a character, but like she's part of the old and narrow in, in, the, in A Little Luck. Briar is one of the barmaids. But the one that really bothered me was I tried to find Eric's name in my head, or Arik's name in my head. I can't remember how I said to pronounce his name. I'll have to look at the pronunciation guide. The elf who is Kirandir's like pseudo best friend. I could not remember his name. And I was even sitting here just like, when I named him originally, I remember being like, I remember saying his name out loud for the first time. And I said it as Eric. And immediately I was like, oh shit, <laughs> that's the name of someone I went to school with. So like literally like Eric, E-R-I-C. It was his name. It was one of those things that I was just like, oh my God, what a funny thing. Didn't even notice. And <laughs> when I was sitting here trying to think of his name, I was like, it's that name of the guy I went to school with. And I just like spent five minutes being like, what the fuck is the name I went of the guy I went to school with? Oh my God. Because we referred to him as his last name a lot of times. But like my memory was just like gossamer strings. Like nothing was coming together. So it was a little bit scary because I don't like actively feeling like I'm losing my memory a little bit. Like I don't like not being able to remember things. It freaks me out a little bit. And like the physical feeling of being like, why can't I remember this thing that I literally made up less than a year ago, right? Is a little freaky. <laughs> I don't like it very much. So I wanna make sure that I'm staying up on my, on my uh, trilogies and series that I have started this year so that I can keep them in my mind and not lose track of them. Do you guys ever feel that way about memory and like, uh, because I've always like kind of joked a little bit about my book retention memory, but when I was a kid, I could memorize speeches and projects and I could remember things. I was like a locked box of memory. And I don't know what happened over the past few years, especially like in university, I could like study and remember facts very, very well. But coming out of it, I've lost a lot of that ability to memorize and to remember things. And I'm concerned about the way that my memory is going and <laughs> I don't like it. So, uh, what else can we do except for just keep reading, <laughs> keep working our muscles of our brain? But do you guys feel that way? Do you guys have those fears? Is it just me? I gotta go to bed. I gotta be up in the morning, but that was my day. What a good day. Look at me go. Posey says hello. 
Did I introduce you guys to her? I found her at the thrift store a couple of weeks ago, not even. And I saw her amidst all the stuffed animals in, a, in the thrift store in a bin at the back. She didn't even have a tag on her ear. She was just part of the like, however many you can squish into a bag, you pay like $2 for. And I saw her, I saw just like an ear and the in the texture of her. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're coming home with me because she's now Frederick's little sister. <laughs> This is Frederick, by the way. Do you guys remember Serta Sheeps? That's what he is. I got him at a garage sale the, 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 like, the fall of when my parents bought our cabin and when I bought my place. And I got him as part of that garage sale. I also got my fan and my plants and like a piece of art in my place from that garage sale for my place. But like that's where Frederick is from. He's a Serta Sheep. You guys remember when Serta had sheep as part of their ads? The mattress company? Yes. I love him and he's so floofy. You put him in you put him in the dryer and he just he expands exponentially. And so I thought it was really cute and funny that I found um Posey, who is a match. Not a sort of sheep, but like they are the same. They are one and the same. Anyways, I gotta go to bed. Talk to you guys tomorrow for Sunday. Gosh, golly, I just got home from being with my dad basically all day. My boots, my winter boots. The zipper just broke on my favorite winter boots. I'm so sad about it. I think I need to <laughs> find a shoemaker who can fix zippers. Cause like the boots are in perfect quality still. Like there's no breaking of the like actual shoe or sole. And like the bottom of the sole boot is still in really great condition. There's no rubbing of it at all. Just the feckin' zipper broke. Anyways, I'm home now. Putting on some pajamas, cause of course I am. But yeah, what a good day. It was genuinely lovely. We went to the show, stayed there for about an hour and a half, which that hour and a half went so quick. It didn't feel like we were there for that long. Saw many, 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 many different things you can get for a cabin. Very fun. I did not spend a dime, but I did get, it's like a stick of butter. It's in like this tube thing that like you can push up and you can cut discs off of it. And like the butter is flavored. We got four different ones, three different ones, but a double of one. Cause I wanted the garlic. I wanted the garlic one to try and we got that. <laughs> and I uh, got a sample of free dog food that my dog promptly ignored. <laughs> She's so picky. She's such a funny goose, but any who's all. Love that. I took my computer with me to do a bunch of different tax things. I've been compiling different invoices and, and all sorts of stuff from last year. And it just, today was printout day <laughs> for taxes. All my tax document, this is a fantastic angle. I love that you can see so much of me right now. <laughs> yeah, all my tax documents are ready to go. Had to hunt down all sorts of things. You know how it goes. I work from home, so I had to hunt down like hydro statements and my Wi-Fi statements, all sorts of stuff, because you can you can write it off because you work from home. So I was doing all that. It's so many documents to print. And then once it was all printed and compiled, my dad was like, you know you didn't have to print off every invoice from Hydro, right? And I was like, dude, <laughs> you could have told me that. And he's like, the guy's not gonna look at it. He's just gonna look at the totals. So just take the totals. And I was like, David, do you understand how many invoices there are from Amazon in here? And he was just like, just write the total. I was like, David, it's all fine. <laughs> what am I doing in my kitchen? I don't need to be here. Oh my God. Oh my god. Anyways, that was my day. I did a little bit of writing there. Not much because I was hanging out at their place from about 2.30 to now and it's 7.40. The state of my hair has just gotten progressively worse out today. I'm so irritated by it. <laughs> Haven't done any reading. Haven't done really any writing. I only got like 300 words down, which is nothing. That's like two paragraphs, really, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. It is still a good amount of words, but it's Nothing when you're trying to write 3,000 every day, roughly. <laughs> 2,900. 
Anyways, I'm gonna settle back on my couch. I feel like I've socialized for too long, which is valid and very true because I was there for a long time, but now we're home. <laughs> now we're home. Things are fine. The hair is not herring today. I'm just gonna sweep them to the side for now and look a little ridiculous, but that's okay. Maybe I'm gonna pin them. I should pin them. They're gonna drive me bananas anyway, so might as well pin them. I'm gonna get back on my couch, gonna get all cozied in. It's gonna be a good, what a wonderful angle. <laughs> it's gonna be a good evening. I'm gonna hopefully get some writing done now. And maybe some reading done in a perfect world. Make a good headway umber singer. I haven't seen my forehead in a while. Hello, forehead. <laughs> It's been a while. What a hairdo. What a hairdo. It's a good thing I don't do things for content. <laughs> oh my God. I look ridiculous. Anyways. Oh no. We're just gonna get cozy. And get the evening started, but happy Sunday. <laughs> Happy Monday. Freshly home from work. Freshly had a flat bread in the oven, which just finished. I'm about to cozy up on the couch and eat that and then uh, finish up this vlog because I edited some of it today before work. Oh, what a good weekend. I think this weekend was definitely a good choice. I ended up reading two books. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, second book. Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands, that's what it's called. Okay, Fetty Realms. We had a four and a half star and a three star, which are pretty good. And we also last night managed to get to about 45% mark of Brissinger, which I'm happy about. It looks like it is right at the halfway mark, J -j just about. I'm on page 354. It's called Whispers in the Night. I love that for me. Really, really had a good time reading this last night after I finished my writing uh, for the day. I got another like 3,000 words down or something, and then decided to just <laughs> power through some Brissinger, which was great. I'm very happy that I got my writing done so early, early, much earlier than I usually do. I had it done by 11, which, oh shoot, the rings that I got <laughs> for commemorating second story and a little lock have like open ends and every time they catch on the knit of anything, <laughs> anything knit that I have. Without fail, they will catch on it, which is a little annoying, but it's fine. Anyways, what was I saying? Yes, writing. Went really well this weekend. I'm very happy with all the productivity I got. I hit 60K, which is amazing. I think I hit 40K like last week. <laughs> so wrote 20K in a week. <laughs> Yikes. It's a lot of work. A fair bit of writing, uh, reading done this weekend. A fair bit of writing as well. Didn't do any audiobook work, which is okay. This week coming up, so not this week here, but next week is spring break for my kids. So I have all my evenings free and I'm not teaching that week. So I will have a lot of time to get productive audiobook and writing stuff done. That is the plan anyways. I hope to just keep rolling them out. And now that I have a slightly easier way of editing my audiobook chapters, it doesn't take me quite as long because um, it's a little bit more streamlined now that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> because I, I talked about it in my last vlog, but I spent, was it in my last vlog or was it this week? This past week? It might have been this past week on Wednesday. I don't think I talked about it, but... <laughs> I don't remember what I talk about in any of my vlogs. Last Wednesday, I ended up spending from about the hours of four o'clock to 11.30 p.m., 12 p.m., 12 a.m., I guess, working on audiobook stuff because I wanted to record a couple chapters and start, like, try edit a couple just to make sure, like, they're good. I ended up having to reteach myself how to edit chapters, found a new way to edit, practice that, then re-recorded chapter four 
because I would listen to it. I was editing it and I got halfway through and past me did something with her voice that was just so not like it just sounded so weird. So I was like, all right, we got to re-record this. And there's a lot of plosives in the recordings, which is making me believe that I might need to re-record a lot of my audiobook chapters that I've done because I just the way that I'm facing the microphone is making it very plosive-y, which is not very good and not nice to listen to. So we'll see. As I like edit the chapters, I'll listen to them and see if I need to re-record them. If I do, I'll re-record it and then edit it right away so that it's just done. But yeah, I think I got to chapter 18 of the records the recordings and I've edited chapter four pretty sure and it, like solidified these are done these are edited kind of a thing so we'll see how that goes but yeah oh well that was my weekend it was pretty good and uh the weeks this week coming up is busy busy at work always is but I don't really have anything planned for this weekend coming up I don't think it is my friend's birthday and I don't know if she's coming into the city for it but we'll see I don't, know, I don't really have anything planned so I'm happy to have a little bit of just time this week to try balance the craziness of work during the day and then also the challenge of writing and like trying to read things and keep up with the audiobook stuff and everything so I don't have any plans but I know I'm gonna be busy like all the way through that's just what March is apparently anyways my friends thank you so much for watching this weekend I hope you enjoyed and uh let me know down below what you are currently reading and if you are liking it I would love to know and if you don't really want to know if you or if you don't want to say that just leave me a little emoji one of your favorite emojis that you use so far so that I know you made it all the way to the end of this video I'll catch you in another one very soon stay kind and keep on reading